In the last video, we looked at the polarity of covalent bonds. And in this video, I want to talk about the polarity of molecules. Now, I think the Zoom dolls do this a little bit backwards. They link in the polarity of molecules with polarity bonds, which makes sense to me. But the polarity of molecules is actually based on the shape of the molecules. And they don't actually touch that concept until later in this chapter. Fortunately, we have a little bit of a background in molecular shape already that we can call upon. Even if a molecule has polar bonds, the shape of the molecule or the symmetry of the molecule can allow the polarity of the individual bonds to cancel out, resulting in a nonpolar molecule. So if we need to figure out if a molecule is polar or not, we really need to figure out if the molecule is symmetric or not. Now I like to look for the negative. I like to look for asymmetry. And so I examine the central atom of a molecule, and I look for asymmetry around the central atom. Generally speaking, if you have different elements surrounding the central atom, you'll see that your molecules tend to be polar. Likewise, if you find lone pairs on your central atom, those molecules tend to be polar as well. So let's take a look at some examples. I want to look at nitrogen trifluoride, water, carbon dioxide, methane, and a fluoromethane, and figure out the polarity of those molecules. So the nitrogen trifluoride, if you look at the Lewis structure, you're going to have the nitrogen bonded to three fluorines. The fluorines all have their octet satisfied, and the nitrogen has an extra lone pair. If you don't remember how to do the Lewis structures for covalent compounds, sit tight, that'll be coming up soon. But hopefully this is review for many of you. The key here is that you're going to end up with an asymmetric molecule. This unbonded pair, or this lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen, will mess up the symmetry of the molecule. The individual bonds are polar. Remember, fluorine has an electronegativity of 4, and nitrogen has an electronegativity of 3. So that means that the fluorine side is going to be slightly negative, and the nitrogen side is going to be slightly positive. Because there is no symmetry in the molecule, there's no way for the polarity of these bonds to cancel out. This lone pair on the central atom is a key indicator that you're going to have an asymmetric molecule and it's going to be polar. The same thing is true for our water molecule. Now if you look at the Lewis structure for water, it looks symmetric. It looks linear. But hopefully you remember for years of both biology and your first year of chemistry, talking about water molecule, the water molecule is not linear. It's a bent shape. It is not a symmetric shape. These lone pairs, again, on the central atom are making the molecule asymmetric. And so it's this asymmetry in the molecules that you're looking for. So both the NF3 and the H2O are both polar molecules because they're asymmetric. And they're both asymmetric because they have lone pairs on the central atom. CO2 is a little bit different. Carbon is double bonded to the two oxygens. Now, if you look at our electronegativity values, oxygen's at 3.5 and carbon's at 2.5. So that means the oxygen is slightly negative and the carbon is slightly positive. But the same can be said about the other bond. Now, this oxygen is slightly negative and this carbon is slightly positive. So overall, there is no negative side of the molecule, no positive side of the molecule. If you prefer to draw dipole arrows to show polarity, this bond would be polar in this direction, this bond would be polar in this direction. And that'll be pleasing to your physics students because you can see that we're talking about vectors canceling each other out, so there is no net polarity. So even though the bonds are polar in carbon dioxide, the molecule is nonpolar. And that's because of the symmetry of the molecule. Same for CH4. CH4 is a really nice symmetric molecule. The bonds are right on that threshold of polarity. Carbon again at 2.5 and hydrogen at 2.1. We said 0.4 as a difference in electronegativity was kind of the cutoff to figure out whether a bond is purely covalent or polar covalent. So these bonds are kind of in that gray area, but the molecule very certainly is not. The molecule is a nonpolar molecule because of the symmetry around all the bonds in the central atom. CH3F has a very similar shape as the CH4. They're both tetrahedral. However, once you have more than one element surrounding the central atom, so if I replace one of these hydrogens with the fluorine, 
Now I no longer have symmetry around the central atom. I have different elements surrounding the central atom, especially this highly electronegative fluorine. That is going to disrupt the symmetry. It's going to be an asymmetric molecule, resulting in polarity. Tetrahedral shape, just like the CH4 before it. But because I have different elements surrounding the central atom, it's going to be polar. The same would be true for CH2F2. If I drew CH2F2 like this, well, you might think it's symmetric and it's nonpolar. However, if I drew it like this, I hope you would see that there's polarity here, that you have some asymmetry here. And in reality, there's no difference between those two because these molecules don't exist as a two-dimensional Lewis structure. They exist as a three-dimensional tetrahedron. So this molecule will be polar however you arrange the bonds. The same way that water is polar, even though it looks like it's nonpolar from the Lewis structure. But once you get into the three-dimensional shape, you can see that you'll have two hydrogens next to each other and two lone pairs next to each other. Same here, you'll have two hydrogens next to each other and two fluorines next to each other. So when we see different elements surrounding the central atom, or when we see lone pairs surrounding the central atom, those molecules are generally polar. There are some exceptions, but those exceptions are pretty rare.